Hello, welcome to the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Probability Measure. And here we're going to extend the Lebesgue Stilches measure to a field. Currently, we only have it defined on an open interval or, or a right semi closed interval. So now let's let f be a distribution function and it goes from the extended reals to the extended reals where, you know, the r bar is the real numbers plus the endpoints minus infinity and plus infinity and really it's just by convention we're, we're going to let the limit as x go to infinity be called f of infinity and f of negative infinity be the limiting process of that f of x as x goes to negative infinity now the limits exist because of monotonicity uh, which could be you know infinity or negative infinity now let's define this measure, Lebesgue Stilts measure, Stilts measure from you know the right semi-closed interval from A to B as the difference of f of B minus f of A. Uh, a and B are in this extended reals, A less than B. Now we must define this closed interval, right? The interval that you know captures minus infinity as a right semi-closed interval. It's essentially the same. It's the only realistic possibility that we can do and it and it's okay to do this. And we're just going to call it f of b minus f of minus infinity. Now let i1 through ik be disjoint right semi-closed intervals of the extended real. Define the union, the measure of the union of these disjoint intervals as the sum of the measure of these disjoint intervals. And, uh, thus, mu is extended to a field generated by these right semi-closed intervals uh, of right uh, semi-closed intervals of the extended reals. Okay. Now, in the next video, we'll prove that the set function mu defined above is countably additive on this field. And then we need that to extend it to a sigma field of right semi-closed intervals, or the Borel sets. Uh, we'll need the following theorem when proving mu is countably additive on the field of these right semi-closed intervals. Now, the theorem is this. Let mu be a non-negative, finitely additive set function on the field f of 0, or f naught. Now, if A1, A2, dot, 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 are disjoint sets in the field, and the union of these disjoint sets happens to be, you know, or must be back in the field, then the following property holds. The measure of this infinite union is greater than or equal to the, sum, the infinite sum of the measure of those disjoint intervals. And the proof goes like this. Let the finite sum of these disjoint intervals, it's a subset of the infinite sum. And because of that, the measure, the mu of the finite union, is less than or equal to mu of the infinite union. Um, now, since mu is finitely additive, we know that if the measure of a finite union, right, because it's this is a measure over a field, that has to equal to the sum of the measure of AI. You know, these AIs are disjoint intervals. Now look at this. This piece here is equal to this. So we can put this right here. Now, if we let n go to infinity, right, so this goes to infinity, this infinite sum is less than or equal to the measure of the infinite union of these disjoint sets AIs. And that's the proof. All right. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.